nasty opponent. Well, and you just saw number one, Zurich Phelps, who's their leading scorer. He is the leader of this team. Look, this team beat West Virginia earlier this year. This team lost two heartbreakers to Arizona State by two and Dayton by two. They just need to learn how to finish. Here we go, Doug. SMU with the basketball in their alternate black uniforms in Tallahassee, Florida, here at the Tucker Center. Number one is Zurich Phelps who last year was sixth in the American in scoring, helps to set up a layup inside, and the Mustangs are off and running. Worley Green, Watkins, Deontay Green, and Baba Miller, who has continued to work so hard this year on his shooting, out at 5 o'clock today, only one on the floor at that point, still working on his shooting, coming off a horrible game shooting free throws here goes baba miller driving to the bucket and he's got the seminoles on the board yeah baba miller is one of those big guys that can put the ball on the floor and attack and now we're seeing florida state full court pressure dj edwards at the point we've talked about Phelps, chuck harris samuel williamson who began his college basketball career at louisville and then keon ambrose hilton another one of the transfers in the starting lineup he is an alabama transfer and there is Phelps, 6'5", a junior from Midland, Texas, out of Duncanville High School. He is seventh in the conference this year in scoring at 16.1. And they need more than just scoring, though, Mark, out of Zurich Phelps tonight. Well, the growth and leadership and maturity of Zurich Phelps shined through at West Virginia when he pulled the team together at halftime and challenged them and mature in the right way. And this team responded. He's the true leader of this team. Number one in black, Zurich Phelps. Keep an eye on him. Chuck Harris, the former Butler Bulldog, buries the three. Yeah, Harris is just a hooper. He really knows how to play. Interesting, Jalen Worley with the basketball, number one in white, has yet to attempt a three-point shot this year. Unheard of in modern basketball. Foul on the drive that will send Jameer Watkins to the line. But Worley, coach, just has determined I'm not good at shooting three balls this year, and so I'm not going to shoot them. Now, this is a guy who has shot plenty of them his first two years at a 31% clip, but I find it so interesting and admirable that he has taken it upon himself to say, you know what? I'm not making a high enough percentage of them. I'm going to do other things well. You know, one thing that Leonard Hamilton's team have, have always done under his mentorship is identifying parts and pieces, where they fit, and how to win. Now, in the last couple of years, he's struggled because he hasn't had the depth. He's had turnover of roster with the, with the new rules of transferring and things like that. But this roster intrigues me, and it has those same parts and pieces. And so Worley brings tremendous on-ball defense. He can pressure the ball. He can deflect the dribbler. And so he's deferring his offensive game to bring greater defense and another part and piece to the puzzle that is Leonard Hamilton's basketball team. A couple of free throws made by Jameer Watkins makes it 5-4. Harris uses the screen. Now with the switch, looking to go to work. Bottom of your screen, watch Worley and Phelps. That's one versus one. Worley all over Phelps, not getting the ball. Williamson. Traveling violations. FSU's defense is a staple. And Doug, Jalen Worley was the reason why Rob Lemire's offense shut down. He completely took Zurich Phelps out of that possession by full denial of the basketball. Uh, Coach Hamilton says of Jalen War Warley, quote, he's got a lot of Philly in him. He uh, has done a great job defensively, and Jalen growing up has vivid memories of the Finley Recreation Center, playing ball there just like Wilt Chamberlain did, just like Kobe Bryant did, just like his dad and his uncles did. He is Philly through and through. On the opposite side, watch the bottom of the screen, number 22, Darren Green, a marksman, one of the great shooters in the country. He's not touched it yet. Worley off the mark. Deontay Green pulls it back out. Consecutive shots that did not hit the rim, so a shot clock violation gives the ball back to SMU. And there's Coach Hamilton in his 22nd year, 1971 graduate of UT Martin. 
and he has told me in the past that he was planning to use the GI Bill to become the first in his family to attend college. But then instead of joining the Army, he was given an opportunity at Gaston College in his hometown of Gastonia, which fostered his needs and his desire to grow led him to become the first black athlete a couple of years later at UT Martin. He is the first of many in many different walks of life and specifically in college basketball. And Leonard was also the first black basketball coach in the SEC under Joe B. Hall with some of those great Kentucky teams back in the early and mid-70s. Yeah, first black head coach in the Big 8 at, the, at Oklahoma State. And on and on and on. And what a marvelous run he has had at FSU. Worley, cross court with three to shoot. Off the bounce, Watkins. And another shot clock violation. That will make Rob Lanier very happy. The second year head coach at SMU has uh, built this team on defense. And they have been rebounding, fighting for loose balls. And now we will all get our first look at former Georgetown Hoya. Primo Spears, the junior from Hartford, Connecticut, who is now eligible and inserted into the lineup by Coach Hamilton about three and a half minutes in. Remember how stifling this SMU defense has been in the first three and a half minutes of this game. Why? Because nobody at Florida State could penetrate past the defender. Primo Spears has that ability. We'll see if the game changes here. Bob it up. Two points after breaking the pressure. SMU on top by five. Now will Primo Spears, will he let the game come to him as Darren Green goes up for the three? Keeps the dribble. And now they'll reset with B.J. Edwards, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee, at the point. Got this back to the side on the switch. Spears passed up with the big, and Spears comes around. Great play. And here comes Spears. Lob it to the rim. Bad pass. Trying to find Jalen Ganey. And one bad pass begets another. Here come the Knowles. Florida State back within three. And Darren Green with the layup. He can heat it up. Now Doug, Florida State likes to switch a lot of screens. You'll see them switch up. That does create some mismatches. First time out, when we come back, we'll tell you what you need to know about the newest Knoll, Amir Primo Spears. In 20 years. The Mustangs with the early three-point lead over the Seminoles in Tallahassee and uh, a shot in the arm for FSU with the activation of Primo Spears, Amir Spears the fourth. He, uh, from the time he was three, was getting up early morning to have workouts with his dad, Amir the third. They're best friends. And he gets his nickname Primo from his dad. His dad was named Premier. Then it was Pre, then down to Primo. And so it's Big Primo and Little Primo. And Lil Primo brings an awful lot. Third stop, a couple of years at Duquesne, then last year, 16 points per game at Georgetown. And now, Mark, he is a Florida State Seminole. You know, and I'm always curious about what teammates say about another teammate. So I reached out to Darren Green Jr. and asked him, what does Primo Spears bring to this lineup? He talked about the fact that Primo comes to practice every day with his lunch pails, work boots, and, and practices like he's gonna play tonight. This kid had to wait and wait and wait. High basketball IQ, but a real voice on the bench even though he wasn't playing. Green told me that sometimes he gets lost and he doesn't pick his spot the right way. And that Primo would watch him and coach him on how to get open, move without the ball. The last thing that Primo brings to this team, he knows every player on the team where they want the ball. 
in every situation. He's a cerebral point guard who brings a lot to this Florida State basketball team. Good ball movement to get a clean three, just missed by Chandler Jackson. Knowles keep it, and a foul is called between the circles. Well, you know, Spears really is playing his, he's playing his first game since the Big East tournament last March, March 8th. Georgetown lost to Villanova, and since that time, number 23 has been on ice in terms of game. Now, this is like a mid-season trade, if you will. This is a shot in the arm for Florida State. Look, we're all familiar with what happened with Florida football when the quarterback went down and probably denied them a shot at the national championship. Now, how will the NCAA selection committee determine how these teams react when they add players to their roster like Primo Spears? Will it be a plus for them? It'll be interesting to see in March. Spears can't get the roll, but tipped in by Deontay Green. Green is just so long and has a good nose for the ball around the rim. Meanwhile, at this end, SMU has turned the ball over four times, and they made their first four shots. And there's another turnover. How did you know that was going to be their fifth turnover? That's a walk. <laughs> They've got a, a trend going, just a good guess. So we talked about can Primo Spears, can he get by somebody into the paint? That's where SMU was so effective early in this game. Now he doesn't finish right there, but we see the ability to get to the rim and that makes defenders collapse and react. That's good for Florida State. Chuck Harris's pass makes its way out to the perimeter. Jaheim well, Hudson. SMU looks like the SMU looks like they're passing a hot potato. That's not good. No. Bandler Jackson hands it off. Spears setting up for a good look, but off the mark by Taylor Bull Bowen. Well, the moral victory for SMU early in this game is just not turning it over. Harris, the fadeaway, got it blocked. But Deontay Green is going to be whistled for the foul. Well, to show you how excited Primo Spears was to get on the floor in game action tonight with his Seminoles teammates, he was in the building long before everybody else. That's 12-26 today, getting up shots. Just getting up shots. It's what he has done ever since he was a little kid in Hartford, Connecticut, and that continues in Tallahassee, Florida, now that he's back on the floor, wearing a game uniform for the first time in months. And Doug, that's a full six hours and 26 minutes before he get on the floor as a three-year-old. He's sleeping in today. <laughs> well, Spears will take a seat after getting about a three-minute run. Now I'm guessing he can go over to the bench and catch his breath and uh, feel good about things. Yeah, a little difference between practice, being able to handle the rigors of the game versus game speed. And that's just called a little baptism. Get him in the game, get his feet on the ground, get him feeling comfortable, and then give him another rotation later on. And here's a sense, Mark, of what he can bring to this Florida State team. He went for 37 in the game last year against Xavier. So when he's cooking, look out. Yeah. Now he averaged 16 points over five assists, a couple steals a game, a little bit over one steal a game for Georgetown. Orly directing traffic from the wing. Shot clock down under five. The step back three. A little too strong, back tap, and the Mustangs keep it. Put 20 back on the shot clock. A great defense on Phelps. He's getting nothing done on the offensive end. Number one at the top of your screen. Emery Lanier dumps it off, but protection of the rim again by FSU.
Good Another read inside. Another block shot. There's nothing to show for it, though. Hudson at the other end, trying to cash in. Instead, kicks it out. The three ball, around and out. Great pass. Good shot. Nothing to show for it. That last rebound pulled down by Jalen Ganey. So good to see him back and playing his fourth game as a Seminole after a devastating knee injury cost him last year after transferring in from Brown. He continues to work himself into game shape. Going to be a big part of the Seminoles as they turn the calendar with ACC play coming just a couple of weeks away. 10-8 SMU. We pick up the phone. Hosting Queens University and then Marcus Burton and Notre Dame host the Marist Red Foxes. A good weekend of hoops. Catch it here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. With Mark Adams, I'm Doug Sherman. Clemson, by the way, fell from the ranks of the unbeaten this afternoon in Memphis. Great game, 79-77. P.J. Hall went for 21 points. Had a chance, Mark, to tie the game with a three-point shot with six seconds to go. Couldn't get it to go. Now, losing to Memphis is not necessarily right. a bad thing, especially in Memphis. But for Clemson, they are off to a tremendous start to the year. Yeah, undefeated going into this game. You mentioned P.J. Hall, who I absolutely love. I'm going to go to a really old-school Philadelphia 76ers. Steve Mix-type player, big, strong body that just gives it up to score, to rebound, to set screens. I love that kid. And Brad Brownell, one of the more, one of the more underrated coaches in the country, followed his career at Wright State, did a great job there. And now Clemson in the national rankings under Brad Brownell. It's a really fun team to watch with a lot of dynamic talent. Once again, shot clock an issue for Florida State. And once again, I'm not sure they beat it. Yeah, I don't think it is did. a shot clock violation. You know, Doug, back to that, that Clemson. I've got Clemson Queens coming up as we take a look here on the spin move. Watching the background one zero. It looks like that's a shot clock violation to me. And we also should mention that Queens University out of Charlotte, North Carolina, that one of their alums is Emily Schofield, our producer's wife. We gotta make sure we get that into it. Nice. Yeah. Now the big question is, will she be tuned in to watch her alma mater? That's what we've gotta make sure is going on this Friday night. I have a connection with our producer, and I, I believe I can make that request. All right. <laughs> so indeed they have disallowed the basket for a shot clock violation and out of that Florida State will go into some full court pressure and when you've got Baba Miller at 6'11 204 at the head of that press that's pretty effective well SMU has just been elite defensively offensively they have struck no question turned it over a lot you look at the drive of the basket right there no good but SMU has been elite defensively this year they've improved so much from one year ago First in the American field goal percentage defense. Of course, Houston not there anymore. That helps everybody else in the league right now. But Memphis also has been a really good defensive team. Points allowed. This team is just downright stingy. At the line and is Jalen Smith. With head coach. Well, I was saying, Rob Lanier told us earlier today, Mark, that uh, Jalen Smith, who is the ultimate team guy, he relinquished the starting role to B.J. Edwards, and you followed up with a, a question. What do you mean by relinquish? And I thought his answer was fascinating. Yeah, he, he sat down with Jalen Smith and basically said, look, if you don't feel comfortable with this, we won't do it. And Jalen Smith said, no, I'd rather come off the bench. That's the best thing for this team. You talk about a selfless individual. And Jalen Smith in a culture of we within that SMU locker room, that is an impressive young man and an impressive culture led by Rob Lanier. Off the bounce, Deontay Green's got two more. The sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, draws the Knowles to within one. Doug, I've never heard a coach say, if you're not comfortable with it, we won't do it. I've right. never heard that before in any conversation. But that's the type of culture that Rob Lanier wants. He wants buy-in from his players. He wants to get input from his players. And I think it's really refreshing and fun. Foul on the rebound. And it caught both of our attention when Coach Lanier used that word relinquish. Because again, that implies 
that he gave it up, that the player actively offered for the betterment of the team to give up his spot. Fascinating. Spears back in. Out there with Ganey, Miller, and Watkins. And it looks like Darren Green as well, the five out there for the Noel. Doug, it's amazing what we learned from Coach Lanier today. I don't say anything else, but let's just say we've got some really interesting stuff to talk about coming out of this break. Yeah, no question. He's got his opportunity as a third. Here's at Siena. And then back to uh, being one of the top assistants in the country under Billy Donovan in Florida. Then he uh, was at Texas and again at Tennessee under Rick Barnes. Then he got a head coaching job in the Sun Belt Conference at Georgia State, which he parlayed into this opportunity at SMU. And, and again, this program is on the rise, moving to the Atlantic Coast Conference next year. And it was very well documented, the amount of money back in September that the boosters of SMU raised to help build football and basketball and all the, all the other parts of the athletic department to the level of a power conference school. And uh, the ceiling is very high at Moody Coliseum as far as I'm concerned, Coach. Well, it, it, it's a tremendous facility. There's, there's great history there of success with many, many sports across SMU. It is well-funded, and a president of the United States sits courtside in George W. Bush. It's pretty fun to go see a David Moody. It is. It's a, a good addition as far as I'm concerned to the ACC. Well, looking to go one on one, draws to contact, puts up an air ball, doesn't get the whistle. And now Teddy Valentine, one of our officials, indeed does call a foul. Now, Sir Phelps is really trying to get his offensive game going, forcing that shot right there. And they need him to get the flow, but he just needs to move harder without the basketball. He needs better screens to come off of to get the basketball. So right now they're denying him the ball everywhere. Well, that foul went on Boba Miller in pursuit of the uh, rebound, not on the shot. Samuel Williamson's attempted pass knocked out of bounds with 14 on the shot clock and uh, the Knowles defense flexing its muscles. As you see, they forced eight consecutive misses by SMU. Yeah, Florida State always known for being long and Taylor Bull Bowen right there at 6'10", really long wingspan. Belts from the elbow. He's on the floor, others on the floor, and the whistle comes for a held ball with a possession arrow belonging to Florida State. Well, Leonard Hamilton's got a team that, that, that plays with a sense of urgency, and they really challenge and block shots aggressively. I love the big guy getting on the floor right there. Just tremendous hustle. You got to know your role. Taylor Bulboa now has challenged a shot, and now gotten on the floor for a loose ball coming off the bench. Those are the kind of guys you win with. 6'10 freshman from Jericho, Vermont. ESPN 100 guy last year, number 82 recruit in the country. Landed by Coach Hamilton and his staff. Spears, no. I also found it interesting, Mark, what you were referencing. Chandler Jackson had a quote saying, we're more connected this season, we're more together, talking about the chemistry of this year's Knowles team as opposed to the one that last year went 9-23. and 23. Well, and they've gone through a couple of losses here recently, and now they need to get back on the winning track tonight and get mentally healthy real fast. And we mentioned where they get Spears back. They still are without Cam Corrin and Cameron Fletcher due to injury, so they are not whole by any means. There's the beautiful stroke of Darren Green, Jr. And one of the great shooters in the country. Of active players, he's in the top ten and made threes. Ganey's back on the floor with Miller having picked up his second foul. Florida State with a two-point lead, SMU with a basketball, 8.22 to go in the half. Another empty trip for the Mustangs. Spears, tough shot. Forced it. That's the thing I was concerned about. If he would just force it, he is tonight so far. Foul's going to go against Taylor Bull Bowen. I 
mentioned how he's from Jericho, Vermont, but that is not where he was born. Actually, his parents fled war-torn Sudan for Egypt, where he was born in a refugee camp. Wound up coming to the United States and at a very young age was adopted by a family in Vermont. And so he grew up downhill skiing and ice skating before finding the love of basketball. I'd like to see that, by the way. <laughs> I'd like to see him downhill skiing. At six feet, 10 inches tall. And I'll be doing the Florida State game coming up the very next game against North Florida. And you can bet that there will be a picture of the big fella skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that. Zurich Phelps missed the first and gets the second. He's been held relatively in check so far, coming in averaging 16 points per game. Boy, just no way to penetrate that defense. SMU really moves their feet well. An illegal screen against Florida State. Well, who's Rob Ferguson? And why is he so important to SMU basketball now and going forward? We'll answer when we come back. It's tough. Back in Tallahassee, Florida, SMU trailing Florida State by a point. Born Rob Ferguson in New York City in 1968 to teenager Shauna Foster, who herself was an illegal alien from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Raised in Buffalo, Rob didn't know his father until high school when uh, they did foster a good relationship. Emery Lanier died in 1987 when Rob was at St. Bonaventure. He then took his father's last name and subsequently named his firstborn Emery. Now, Rob and his mom, Shauna, remain close. She'll actually be traveling from Canada to Texas next week to spend Christmas with her grandkids. You know, Doug, Rob Lanier and his father reconnected, and they broke that dysfunctional cycle. Leonard Hamilton also played a role in Rob Lanier's development as a coach with some fatherly advice early in his coaching career. Both Lanier and Leonard Hamilton were at the same junior college practice on a recruiting trip. Hamilton noticed the young coach and engaged Lanier by asking him if he wanted to be a head coach someday. Lanier indicated, yeah, absolutely. Hamilton mentored him, suggesting he learn to do everything, not just be a recruiter, learn to schedule, learn to plan practice, learn on-court coaching, skill development. Lanier's done just that, now he's the head coach at SMU. Leonard Hamilton is like the godfather. A lot of people don't understand this, but he's developed young coaches moving forward in their career and finding their way like Andy Enfield at USC. Tremendous influence on infield. Bill Self of Kansas. Yeah, that Bill Self, national championship coach. And Dennis Gates now in Missouri. This guy is the godfather of college basketball coaching. He influenced Lanier and dozens and dozens and dozens of young coaches throughout his career. Yeah, and that random get-together where the two of them first talked some 30 years ago was when Coach Lanier was a young assistant. He wasn't sure whether he was at St. Bonaventure or at Rutgers, but either way, Coach Hamilton, an established Division I head coach, sought him out to just share a few thoughts and they have remained friends ever since and, and that relationship is why these two teams are playing here tonight. I mean, this was a two-year contract for a home-and-home -home series. First one in Tallahassee. Next year, supposed to be back in Dallas. But now that the Mustangs are going to be part of the ACC, that return game isn't coming. And oh, by the way, there is Rob Lanier's son, Emery, who again, he named for his father who when Rob grew up he didn't have a relationship with. So uh, you talk about breaking that dysfunctional cycle. I've known Rob for over 20 years and I've always been really, really impressed at where he has come from, where he is now, and the type of family man that he has been. SMU with the basketball. Long rebound comes back out. Tough shot again, I think. Ganey may have gotten a piece. The Seminoles defense and rebounding is relentless. Yeah, their length is really bothering SMU, but on the opposite side, the same thing is happening. 
this is a defensive struggle. These are two elite defenses. They're just giving each other roundhouses every possession. Well, they're gonna have to repaint the rims at halftime at this end of the floor. SMU has missed its last 12 shots and has not scored a field goal in about nine minutes. Now, you're starting to see some frustration too here, Doug. For example, Darren Green Jr. could knock down three ball with about 25 feet out. He just knew he was open and shot it. And so both Rob Lanier now and Leonard Hamilton, they need more motion. They need more ball movement. They need to be able to get defenders closing out and beating them on the closeouts. Right now, there's a lot of forced shots going on. A little bit too much dribbling and trying to make things happen one-on-one. -on -one. Both these coaches are going to have to rein their teams in offensively and play together. There you see the frustration right there from Zurich yeah. Phelps, the leading scorer for SMU. Phelps has only three points on one of six shooting. He comes in averaging over 16 per game. SMU made its first four shots of this ball game, and since that time, they have missed 17 of 19. Really for the first time in a long time, SMU caught not being able to defend the dribble and actually reached out and grabbed them. They've been so good on the ball defense tonight. Worley from the baseline. Great cut. The Mustangs desperate for a bucket, can't get it on the three-point try by Emery Lanier. Got a good look out of transition, but Josh Nickelberry's shot rims out. Here comes SMU the other way, and another FSU block shot. <laughs> Those field goal percentages just keep going down. I've seen better shooting percentages on hockey games. <laughs> I mean, look at the defense, look at the length. Florida State just brings athlete after athlete after athlete and just goes up and gets it. Josh Nickelberry right there. The Atlantic 10 Conference sixth man of the year last season at LaSalle has come to play his final year of college eligibility at Florida State. He's my favorite Seminole too, by the way, Doug. We'll explain that later, but he's my favorite yeah. Seminole. Yeah, well, you're wrong in that, because I've got my own favorite, but we'll explain. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> Here goes Nickelberry. He hits the deck and was fouled. Now, Nickelberry, you might remember, played a couple of years at Louisville, but only got into 24 games total. And uh, wound up going on to LaSalle the last two years with the Explorers. He was able to get more minutes and really evolved his game. He was a big recruit coming out of Fayetteville, North Carolina back in the day. And uh, from a very athletic family, as you might uh, expect, his father was a star, an All-American linebacker at Northern Illinois University back in the day. He once had a, a scoop and score against the Arkansas Razorbacks. That's got to be pretty cool, fighting all those pig suey chants in Fayetteville. What did they win? Uh, I would guess no, but I don't know for sure. No. Guess I'm Northern guess. Illinois has been good. Six to shoot. Tough shot created nicely, though, by Chandler Jackson. The sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, is on the board, and it's back to a one-point game. Chandler Jackson, one of those guys that can assist at almost a three to one assist to turnover ratio that time. Finally giving F FSU some offense. One and done, rebound snared by Ganey. Good ball movement. Jackson off the front iron. And then the Mustangs finally score to put it back to a three-point game on the layup by B.J. Edwards. Well, this is exactly what SMU wants. Hang around, keep the lead, keep it physical, turn it into a 
a, a, a defensive mosh pit. And that's exactly what the Mustangs are doing right now. Well, SMU was picked number seven in the preseason American Athletic Conference poll. And I'm not sure where you would see them slotting in, Mark, as that ball is knocked out of bounds. But they have shown signs that they might be better than that. FAU clear number one in the American. Memphis not far behind. But SMU, if it plays this kind of defense, is going to be in a lot of ball games. They're making it tough on the Seminoles all night. Patrick, thanks for safe. As we mentioned, going to break, the American Athletic Conference is uh, top heavy. I mean, FAU went to the Final Four last year. They're the preseason favorite coming in. Memphis has showed extremely well this year. And you go down to number seven uh, in the preseason poll was uh, SMU. What do you think about the Mustangs as they uh, have their finale season in the American and, and where Rob Lanier's team might stack up? Well, Rob Lanier in his second year, this is a more stable program now. He's been able to recruit to his way of coaching. They've had returning players like Zurich Phelps have been really good offensively. But as you mentioned, Doug, they face as together of a team as there is in the country in Dusty May's FAU house. Th those guys play together. Penny Hardaway told me that they are the most together team that he's ever coached against. Mm. And that includes the NBA, by the way. Memphis today, they knock off number 13 and undefeated going into today. Clemson. Heck of a win for Memphis. It was their first home game in over 29 days. They've gone on the road, won at VCU. They won at Texas A&M, and now they win against Clemson. And Ron Hunter and Tulane with Jalen Forbes and Kevin Cross, that is a really talented basketball team that's been through the wars of the American. They haven't quite gotten to the summit yet of the American, but that's a really good team as well. After that, then it's a flip a coin. There's a lot of good teams, not great teams. I think SMU is one of those top four or five teams from what I've seen tonight. And you mentioned uh, FAU ranked 15th. They were in Springfield, Massachusetts today and beat, by coincidence, Rob Lanier's alma mater, St. Bonaventure, 64-54. Yeah. So the Owls are 9-2, and two, and uh, they've got a couple of guards that could wind up in the NBA. They've got Vladimir Golden in the middle, if you remember him, the big guy from the yeah. Final Four run last year, who is really, really good. So uh, they're the team to beat. Uh, and SMU will start concentrating next year on being a member of the ACC, but for now they are all American Athletic Conference. There's Cal and Stanford also coming into the ACC. There's Chuck Harris. Step back three. Nothing but net. With SMU, I just like their poise, especially defensively. Now, offensively, it's been a train wreck at times for both these teams. But let's credit how athletic both these teams are and how hard they've played defensively. Well, in an effort to get some shooting into the uh, game, Leonard Hamilton inserted Tom House. You saw him miss the three at one end, and that got the Mustangs, the Pony Express, out and running. SMU has an eight-point lead. Beat a stingy defense, you run, you push the ball. You the coverage begins at noon Eastern. And before that, tomorrow morning, they are going to unveil a statue of the great Muffet McGraw. And she's going to be the first female in fighting Irish athletics history to have a statue joining. Get this list, Mark. New Era, Dan Devine, Lou Holtz, Frank Leahy, Moose Krauser. Those are statues around the football stadium next door. But now the basketball arena will have Muffet McGraw standing tall by one of the entryways beginning tomorrow and forever going forward. That is really cool. I mean, obviously well learned, a tremendous basketball coach, motivator of women, and also a person who was never afraid to share her opinion on anything that could help women, the women's game, and overall our country. So I, I just think it's a, it's a tremendous honor to a well-deserving coach. Yeah, 33 years as head coach in Notre Dame, nine Final Fours, couple of national championships. That'll be part of our coverage here on ACC Network tomorrow. Coverage begins at noon. Florida State gets a couple of points on the board, making a six-point game under a minute and a half remaining here in the first. Well, both teams are starting to take the lid off. Now. They're actually getting some points through the basket. 
mean, Doug, I would double down in two areas. Get out and run like this and go to the offensive glass. Manufacture points. Darren Green Jr. all by himself. Well, normally that's money. Contested shot goes for the Mustangs. Back to an eight-point lead thanks to Zurich Phelps. Now this eight-point lead feels like it's 20 in this game. Rob Lanier's defense has been suffocating. Primo Spears pass, mishandled by Bull Bowen. Five to shoot. Bull Bowen may have taken an extra step to get yeah. a whistle and a foul, I guess. Indeed, it is a personal foul against SMU. Well, I definitely saw a walk. Right One, there. Two, three. That's three steps. Going to line in the seminal shooting two, number two, Taylor Bowen. Definitely some contact, but looked like Bull Bowen actually ran into him more than anything else. ACCPM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannenbaum is weekdays at 4 Eastern from Mark's Charlotte studio in his basement. They will talk the latest from around the conference right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. You Are chuckle. you in your basement right now, Doug? I'm just curious. I am not. I am not. Are you? Uh, I'm in the Enthusiasm's basketball cabin out back <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't go to the basement here. We go to the Enthusiasm's hoops cabin out in my backyard. I can't believe we've taken almost an hour to get Enthusi Adams into our broadcast. <laughs> Final six seconds of the half. Off the front iron. And a foul on the rebound with under a second to go. <laughs> so, so, Doug, I have to brag here. I have the greatest backdrop in the history of ESPN, live from home. I got the Christmas tree behind me. I got my book, Coach and the Geek, right over me. I got a, a net from a championship from, you know, about decades ago when I was a lot younger than I am now. So I take a lot of pride in the fact that I don't do my games from a basement. I decorate the Enthusiasm Hoops cabin just for the holidays. And I got my candy stripe, my candy cane stripe tie as well. When we, I came festive. Now, I noticed your green tie, and I think it's great. I love your green tie. But I brought my A game, my Christmas A game tonight for ESPN. So you're giving me, what, a B-minus? No, no, I'm giving you a B-plus. I'm giving you a red stain. I'm giving you a B-plus because you're a red stain. <laughs> well, it is the holiday season, but uh, the Scrooge was around Tallahassee in the first half, not allowing many baskets. As points. The only person who has really scored the ball, Chuck Harris, leads everybody with nine points. Long rebound into the corner. The Mustangs extend the possession back out to Samuel Williamson, still looking for his first points. Nice pass on the back door. Williamson again looking to set up a teammate. It goes out of bounds. Back to Florida State. But the good news is SMU did get an offensive rebound. And I think they should have just stuck it right back up there. Jalen Worley at the point. The junior from Philadelphia averaging six points, three and a half assists per game. But really credit the SMU defense is the best shooter, one of the great shooters in the country, number 22 in white, Darren Green Jr. There he gets a shot right here. That's the first time he's been able to catch the ball and actually make a play since the first half. Well, his reputation always precedes him as an excellent three-point shooter, Mark. We got a timeout called by SMU. So if you're defending him, even if he's not made a three tonight, you've got to go out and chase him. Yeah, and, and you've got to make sure he doesn't catch the basketball because he has had layers to his game. I called games for him when he was at UCF, and he's obviously a really good shooter. And right now, Leonard Hamilton trying to bring this Florida State team back. Leonard Hamilton was a candidate last year for the Naismith Hall of Fame. Now, he didn't make it. This year's nominees will be announced this coming Thursday 
And as Coach Hamilton told me last year, if he ever were to make it to Springfield, quote, I'd consider it the gravy on the home front. What a marvelous career that he has had. He has seen it all, done it all. Even had a one-year run as the head coach in the NBA, the Washington Wizards. Although it didn't go all that well, he's come back to college. And at one point, he was the winningest coach in both Miami Hurricanes and Florida. And here's the number, number one in Miami. Here's the number that we don't talk about enough. 97% of the players who have completed their eligibility under Coach Hamilton have graduated. 97%. SMU's lead is back to seven. Chuck Harris, the first into double figures on the turnaround. SMU's figured it out, Doug. They're starting to move the ball better. We saw it late in the first half. They've made the adjustment. They've they put more pressure on the FSU defense by swinging the ball side to side and finding open shooters. Good penetration by Jameer Watkins. He's got his first field goal of the night. You know, Florida State at halftime definitely talked about more penetration, more active dribble to the rim. Edwards off the ball screen has a mismatch. Lost it, tried to go for half behind his back, and here comes Florida State on the run. Pulling up, Green off the front of the iron. Back the other way comes SMU. Good ball movement. Find the open man in the corner. Got a good look, but Harris missed it on the putback. It's now 29-22 SMU. So, Doug, what did we talk about adjustments? More 94 feet, more double down on the offensive glass, and that's exactly what SMU did on that possession. Green feeds the post. Here comes the double team. Bob and Miller back into the corner, under 10 to shoot. That should have been an easy shot. Two-foot jump stop on the left-hand side and just power to the rim instead of alley-oop up and under. Phelps will head to the free throw line. First foul on Worley. Look how, this is an easy basket. Stay on the left-hand side and finish. Instead, go dipsy-do underneath and off the rim. No, keep the game simple. Well, in talking about uh, Coach Hamilton, he got his first opportunity to be a coach in college basketball a long, long time ago. And, uh, Mark, you were doing a little bit of research. That was 1971 at Austin P. State University. We could have got by Fly Williams, by the way. The number one movie in George C. Scott was the actor of the year, Pat, in 1971. The number one song was Joy to the World by Three Dog Night. Everybody remembers that one. And SMU head coach Ralph Lanier was three years old when Leonard <laughs> Hamilton was the assistant coach at Austin P. when they went to the NCAA tournament with Fly Williams. The famous chant was, The fly is open. Let's go P. Fly is open. Let's go P. Fly is open. Let's go P. And it was Leonard Hamilton as that young college assistant who went into Brooklyn and got Jimmy Fly Williams to come to Austin P. And they went to the Sweet 16. I mean, it really was remarkable. Yeah. And, and Blake Kelly allowed Leonard Hamilton to do all the things to be a head coach, not just be a recruiter, but to plan practice, to schedule, to do all the things that a head coach needs to do to be successful. Because honestly, there were a lot of coaches, if we take it hard to the rim right there, and there's the foul. A lot of coaches back in the 70s and 80s that were uh, African-American coaches were seen as recruiters and didn't get the opportunities to become full-fledged coaches as far as scheduling goes, as far as, on, as far as strategies go and things like that. The game has certainly changed and moved in the right direction. And that's where Leonard Hamilton has been such a great voice in this game, helping young coaches to understand how you develop as a head coach. And so many he's mentored along the way. And you know, you talk about uh, the racial environment that he came up in, not only growing up in the segregated South in Gastonia, North Carolina, but when he was an assistant at Austin P, they had done so well, they made it, like I said, to the Sweet 16. The head coaching job came open and the university president said to Leonard that he was not strong enough as a leader to promote a black man to that position at that time. 
And Coach Hamilton said it cut my guts out. So he left basketball, took a sales job at Dow Chemical until a fateful phone call from Joe B. Hall at Kentucky, who did have the nerve to be able to bring on a black man in that environment and establish the groundwork that you're talking about. And he's a Hall of Fame coach, period. Yep. SMU's lead balloons to 12 off another Florida State turnover. Remo Spear still looking for his first basket as a Seminole. He had a tough start to his FSU career over six in that first half. Maybe he'll find his rhythm here in the second. Watkins after his own miss and the whistle goes against the Mustangs. SMU all night long. Steel leads to easy offense. That's why the Stangs are in the lead right now. Flow offensively, number one in black there has been the catalyst just lately. He's got their last five points as part of a 7-0 run. And now SMU with its largest lead of the night over Florida State. It's 34-22 with Mark Adams. I'm Doug Sherman. And the Mustangs, well, up 12, feels like 22 at this point with the way offense has been tough to come by tonight, Mark. Phil, and SMU, they've been a hard luck team. Look, they have four losses against Texas A&M, Wisconsin. Lost by two to Dayton, really good team out of the A-10. And lost by two at Arizona State. I mean, this is a team that could very well be 8-2 and two right now, sitting at 6-4. and four. But Ralph Lear has this team on the right trajectory. And based on his track record of recruiting, you got to figure the talent is going to continue to come to Dallas. They've got, uh, as we talked about in the first half, the facilities. They've got a, a magnificent university. And the job that he did as a head coach at Georgia State most recently, earlier, 20 years ago, getting talent as a head coach at Siena, he acquired a ton of talent, including Jack McClinton, who wound up transferring to Miami and got drafted. And then as an assistant coach for Rick Barnes and for uh, Dave Lato at Virginia and then uh, for Billy Donovan at Florida, he has shown he can connect with people and bring in players. So you're right. It just feels like the trajectory is up. Last year was tough in his first season. They didn't win nearly as many games as they would have liked. But uh, with the move to the ACC looming, it does feel like the Mustangs are positioned to move up. Well, and one thing I know about the ACC, you better be able to defend somebody. And this team is defending a lot of somebody's this season. Tonight, there you see opponent's field goal percentage was number one in the, in the American at 38% tonight, holding Florida State to 24%. I mean, this team can intimidate you. They can smother you with their long, lanky, aggressive defense. They really move their feet in an elite way. That's why they're so effective. And uh, Tyreek Smith just grabbed that rebound. We haven't mentioned him much tonight. A couple of years at Texas Tech, a couple of years at Oklahoma State. Coach Lanier says he's getting better by the day. And at 6'8", 225, he's another grown man up front defending for the Mustangs. Wide open three, just barely nicked the iron. Long pass off the hands of Spears and out of bounds. You know, the difference in these two teams tonight is that SMU and their half-court offense, they are sharing the ball, they're moving the ball, and Florida State is just having a tough time catching the ball coming down the floor. Sometimes you get frustrated and try to do everything at once and try to score without actually doing something with the ball that's effective. Chuck Harris, long three. He's got it. Harris now with 14 points to lead all scores. Yeah, Chuck Harris leading the way, and SMU threatening to run away and hide here in the second half. Now Harris joined the 1,000-point club earlier this season, November 9th against Lamar. Of course, he spent three years at Butler. Starter last year. Long rebound leads to a near run out. Now Harris is set up on the wing. And Doug, that last possession was no pass shot. Shots are just being forced by FSU. They're trying to score 14 points in one possession. That's not how basketball works. Harris got the defender in the air and then missed the bank shot on second effort. Able to score the basketball. 
And SMU is moving the ball, sharing the ball, and doubling down on the offensive glass. Well, when Coach Lanier told us today, Chuck Harris is a hooper, my kind of guy, go get a bucket. That's what I felt on that possession, Mark. Yeah. Green, contested three, able to find the range. Well, he could definitely do that. Darren Green hits, gets hot. This thing's gonna get close real fast. this end for SMU when we come back. Chuck Harris just finding himself wide open, knocking down the three ball. He's been the difference maker offensively. A little bit of offensive glass work, extra effort by Chuck Harris. And we're back. 39-26 SMU. They're the 16 points for Harris out of Ashburn, Virginia. He played in arguably the best high school basketball conference in the country. The uh, Washington, D.C. Catholic League. He played at Gonzaga Catholic High School. SMU builds the lead to 16, their largest of the night. Spears fouled on his drive to the basket. You know, Doug, sometimes you get a sense of a team who's down and they have boys, they have patience, they know they've got to build at one possession at a time. I feel like Florida State right now is just trying to do everything in one possession. Instead of letting the game come to them, hard to do when you've got a good defensive team, a good aggressive defensive team. But this team really needs to settle down, share the ball, and count on each other now. Seminoles call timeout. We'll take it with them and be back to Tallahassee in 30 seconds. Walmart's amazing holiday deals are happening. Florida State down 16. Second half field goal shooting has completely flipped for the Mustang. All of a sudden, their shot is going. Meanwhile, Florida State continues to be stuck in neutral. Well, and credit the SMU defense, but very stingy, but very aggressive. They've moved their feet actively. They've been able to challenge shots, and they've limited Florida State, typically a, a team that's really rangy and can get the offensive glass. We haven't seen offensive glass work really from Florida State. We've seen it from SMU. They've really dominated on the glass and created some second chance points by manufacturing with effort, getting the offensive rim. Bob Miller back on the floor for Florida State. Spears. That's a four shot. Spears is trying right to the hard, ball. Period. Yeah. Missed all six of his shots in the first half. That wasn't a good one there. SMU, meanwhile, six of ten in the second half shooting after only 34% in the first half. Belts. Trip to the free throw line ahead for Tyreek Smith. That's the 12th offensive rebound for SMU. Tyreek Smith just pogos to it. Last year with the Oklahoma State Cowboys, 36 games, started nine, helped that team reach the NIT quarterfinal. Here's our Friday night men's basketball that begins at 6 Eastern. P.J. Hall and number 13 Clemson hosting Queens University and then Marcus Burton and Notre Dame host the Marist Red Foxes. A good weekend of hoops. Catch it here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Really looking forward to seeing P.J. Hall. We're traveling down to Clemson to see that one in person. Really excited about Brad Brown Ells Ball Club. They're undefeated. Going into today, they lost at Memphis in a tough one. That's a good basketball team. Yeah, no doubt about it. Weak side rebound grabbed by Jalen Ganey. 
Florida State extends the possession. 11.45 remaining in the second. There's another force three for you, Coach. On the offensive rebound, though, the Seminoles come, in, come away with a couple of points thanks to the two-time Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year, Jalen Ganey. Yeah, Ganey out of Brown University right there. Really long, really athletic, and really aggressive on the offensive glass. Florida State needs more of that type of focused effort on the offensive end, especially rebounding the ball. Now he went 635 days between playing games. After transferring from Brown, of course, he suffered the knee injury right before the start of last season. And so Ganey playing just his fourth game as a Noel, still trying to work himself into game shape. He could really be a difference maker for the Noles once he gets it going. Timeout at the Tucker Center. The Seminoles down by 15 to the Mustangs with 11-10 on the clock. points a game and 42 percent from downtown this kid is a hooper he is a cool customer and tonight nobody cooler in tallahassee than chuck harris he's finding ways to score from three he's getting in the paint making plays even went to the offensive glass and knocked one down as well the big question mark about chuck harris can he show the passion can he be that leader tonight he's been that leader and after an offensive rebound he even flexed a little bit for us the passion from Chuck Harris. Well, his father, Charles Sr., his mother, Yvette, his siblings, Nina, Alvin, and Keisha, enjoying, I'm sure, tracking Chuck Jr. with the 16 points to lead all scores. Mustangs by 16. Baba Miller grabs the missed free throw. I don't know how you are with plus minus if you uh, think there's a place in analytics for that. I think there is a place, others do not. But SMU is plus 17 with Harris on the court tonight, minus two when he's out of the game. Coincidence or not? No, that's not a coincidence. That's too big of a number. You know, Chuck Harris is one of those guys. Of course, he went for 17.6 rebounds in the loss to Arizona State. And Chuck Harris is a guy that's going to lend his talent well to late game situations. This is a guy that can create a shot, can make a shot, and he makes Zurich Phelps better. But Zurich Phelps can play. Zurich Phelps has had a great night tonight. But Chuck Harris can, can help this team get through offensive droughts. And they went through some of that tonight. And then he's come through in the second half and just been dynamic for SMU. By the way, Primo Spears gets his first two points from the free throw line as a Seminole. And out of that, a little full court pressure from Coach Hamilton. Now, SMU has really used Florida State's help defense against them because they've been able to move the ball aggressively and be a little bit patient on the offensive end. Both of these teams had extended breaks before this game, since their last game, because of final exams. One was off for a week, the other was off for 10 days. And uh, without the students at the Tucker Center, not the energy and environment, but still as a coach, you understand you've got to impress upon your guys. You've got to be able to bring it regardless of the circumstances. Yeah, and SMU going on the road here tonight, they've shown that they have bounced back. Doesn't matter if it's finals or where they played last. They were ready to play tonight right from the beginning, especially yeah. defensively, and their offensive game is caught up. Tough shot in the paint by Chandler Jackson. Starting to feel a little slow now from Florida State. Harris pulls it back out. And lost and out of bounds by Zurich Phelps. So again, the Knowles starting to get something going back within 12. Last two turnovers for SMU off the bounce. Now can Florida State take advantage again? How many times have we felt like there's a fourth shot from Florida State tonight? A lot. A whole lot. The little runner goes. Good touch on that shot by number zero, B.J. Edwards. 
and he's a kid with upside for sure. Still learning how to play a little bit. Right there, that's something you needed a basket. He came through. Knowles continue to start to make some buckets. Back to an 11-point game. Well, you can see the energy on the defensive end as well for Florida State. A few baskets, and this team has come to life. Williamson pulls up. Can't get the roll. Offensive rebound. He pulls it back out. Best time to shoot a three. Off a missed shot and a kick back out. A wide open look for Chuck Harris. That last offensive rebound by SMU was a one-two thing. There were white jerseys in the, in the area, but there were black jerseys that pursued the ball. And that was Samuel Williamson. And, you know, he's been hearing from his coaches as Miller lays it in from his days at Louisville and then continuing with Rob Lanier. You need to crash the glass. You need to make harder cuts. We need that energy. You are a superior athlete, and if you just apply yourself, good things are going to happen, and we saw it on that last offensive rebound. He got the offensive glass and picked up an assist. Here goes Williamson. Hard to the basket off the glass with the left hand. Well, Williamson has made a big difference over the last two possessions by his effort on the offensive glass and then that time attacking off the dribble drive. Well done. Now, Coach Lanier still has faith in the fact that he thinks Williamson, quote, is going to break out soon. Loves the work ethic. Last two possessions, as you said, he was the difference. Primo, no. There for the easy two, Baba Miller. Well, it's turning into a, an offensive rebound fest right now. Now can the white jerseys keep the black jerseys off the offensive glass? Watch the ball go up. Somehow the Mustangs got the ball back. Williamson from 10 Ooh. has two more. Timeout. Mustang. SMU, offensive rebound, gets the ball out. Chuck Harris from downtown. And then Williamson really doing a job of attacking. He's been the most aggressive player on the floor. That's why SMU. At halftime, we talked about adjustments. And the adjustment for SMU was to double down on the offensive glass. Offensive rebounding is a one-two thing. Samuel Williamson wants it for, finds Chuck Harris from deep. Offensive rebounding is a one-two thing. And this is a team that's getting after tonight. 14 one-twos in this game, Doug. 14 one-twos more than their opponents to get the offensive glass and score. Yeah, it's been a big part of what SMU has done this year. And you see they are already above their season average, which is second best in the American Athletic Conference. So getting it done against a long and athletic Florida State team, the want-to for the Mustangs has been better than the want-to for the Noles. Florida State gets a bucket on the reverse. Josh Nickelberry wanting to get it done. The transfer from LaSalle. Florida State has played with more energy. They just haven't been able to turn that energy into knocking down this, this lead for SMU. Now the lead was as large as 17 at 43-26, but the Seminoles chipping away still with time on the clock. Williamson, quick first step to the baseline, went toward the rim with bad intentions. And he will head to the free throw line. Doug, we were talking during we were talking during the break about Samuel Williamson and the things that that Rob Lanier talked about that this would be his breakout season. He has a, a top three work ethic as we see him attack the room right there. And you kept some notes from previous coaches that he played for. What do those say about him? Well, almost identical to what Coach Lanier was telling us today about you got to make harder cuts. You got to run the floor with purpose. Take advantage of the gifts that you have. And uh, Coach Lanier had the same sentiment, all with the belief that it's in there. And you know, I credit Samuel Williamson. He came out of Rockwell, Texas as a huge recruit for Louisville. And he said after his freshman year, I was humbled 
the jump from high school to college was a big deal. And it doesn't matter if you're a top 100 recruit or you're the last guy on the bench. It's a big jump. And it's harder than most people realize, especially when you're playing high school basketball and you have dominated every single game your entire life. It's tough, but again, Coach Lanier, like the coaches he has had previously, have great faith in this young man that he can continue to tap into that talent that he has. Now, that's the thing that, that Rob talked, Coach Lanier talked a lot about yesterday and how he talked about how many players did he mention that I believe in you or I trust you. All of that, that is a powerful statement to a player, that you believe in them and that you trust them as their coach. And we're seeing that manifest itself in the body language and how this team is playing so hard tonight on the road against FSU. Rob Lanier, a 55-year-old from Buffalo. And he is indeed the cousin of the late Hall of Famer, Bob Lanier, on his father's side. They didn't really know each other until well into adulthood for Rob. They uh, coincidentally went to the same alma mater, both went to St. Bonaventure. And Rob Lanier. Rob was a starter for three years in college, a good guard on teams that, as he acknowledged to us earlier, didn't win enough. When I asked him, hey, what's the difference between your son on your team now and you playing at St. Bonaventure back in the late 80s and early 90s? He was quick to say, well, Emery does more winning than his dad, both in high school and in college. He's bigger, more athletic, and better looking than me. So there's that. Well, Emery won a couple of state championships as well, and thank God he looks like his mother. No doubt. The fourth state needs to stop right here in the worst way. Five to shoot. And they get that stop. Can they turn it into offense at the other end? Spears gives it up. That would have made it a single-digit deficit. Well, Deontay Green did everything right except not score. Two-foot jump stop was bounced. Just got intimidated inside. Uh -oh. Lob it up. Williamson throws it down. Every Florida State defender's head turned to the ball. Williamson read the back of the heads of all the defenders, went right to the rim. That's exactly how you back cut from the baseline. Watch all the Florida State faces. See how they're all looking to the ball? You saw every face looking out toward us, and Williamson read it perfectly and just goes right to the rim. Nobody can stop that because everybody was out of position. Everybody was ball-centric defensively. You can't play that way and win. And a terrific delivery on the pass by Chuck Harris right where Williamson needed it. That was one of the problems for Rob Lanier's team last year. They didn't have the point guard play that they have this year. They had guys out of position trying to share that position, and now it seems to fit better this season. Yeah, Chuck Harris has that high basketball IQ. He can shoot the basketball. It just takes a lot of pressure off of, off of Zurich Phelps. And Phelps was the one guy that you had to guard last year. Now you've got multiple guys you have to guard, including Chuck Harris. That's made Phelps better. Kicked out of bounds by Jameer Watkins. The Mustangs will keep it under five minutes left in regulation. Chandler Jackson returns. His father, David, was a four-year starter back in the day in Western Illinois. And was that team's top scorer three times. Now, Doug Phelps has not had a great night. He's only three for 10 from the floor, 0 for three from three. He does have 10 points. But Chuck Harris has bailed this team out because they haven't, they have an option A and an option B now at the guard positions. Eight on the timer. Phelps off the mark. Williamson, another offensive rebound. And Williamson has dominated the last five minutes of this game. Mustangs continue to bleed the clock on top by 11. Jalen Smith on his penetration. We get a whistle. Deontay Green called for the personal. 
Just the sixth team foul on the Seminoles here in the second half. It has been a tough day for the ACC today. Clemson lost to a really good Memphis team at Memphis. North Carolina, Kentucky, two Blue Bloods going after each other. That can quite work out as well as North Carolina fans would hope. Virginia did come back and beat Northeastern in a heck of a ball game before this came. Back. Georgia Tech. Yeah, Reese is going to be spot so far. Yeah, Reese Beekman went for, I think, 21 for Virginia and hit the game-winning shot late to avoid the upset against Northeastern. Great defense again. Right from the start, SMU has just been doing it. And that has been the story. And short of the Mustangs having a change in the last 348, they are in position for the road win. Patrick, it's official. You're the league's most valuable bundler. A couple of possessions ago where all the defenders for Florida State were looking at the ball and he got a dunk on the backside. Well, this is not a bounce play. Look at all the Florida State defenders. Look where their eyes are as they are looking right at the ball as you see the shooter Jalen Smith on the right-hand side along, along the sideline right in front of his own bench because defenders don't see ball and man. Smith just slides right down to the three-point line and is wide open to knock it down. We saw a dunk because Florida State was staring at the basketball, and now we see an out-of-bounds play, a wide-open three-ball, as Florida State has to learn from those defensive mistakes. And there is Green. That's his only made field, or Smith, rather, who made his, uh, that's his only made field goal for the night. As Chandler Jackson stands at the line. Well, we mentioned in the first half, uh, Coach, that you and I, thanks to a little personal touch from Leonard Hamilton's staff, we've got our own favorite Seminoles uh, this year. And when we get a break, we'll, we'll show you exactly why that is. Why I uh, favor. Well, there's a reason why Florida State has been so successful in so many yeah. athletic games. Wow. Well, SMU has really executed in this game. They've turned this thing into a rock fight and just out-executed Florida State at every turn. After the dunk by Tyreek Smith, back to a 15-point lead. SMU with the basketball. 3.20 to go. Phelps along the baseline, lost the basketball. And he commits the foul. So in the mail, from the great truck Walsh, the SID at Florida State, we received handwritten notes from two of the players. As you can see from Mark, it was Mr. Adams from Josh Nickelberry. Thank you for getting to know our basketball team. And then tells him one thing he might not know. Mr. Sherman, thank you as well. One thing you don't know about me is that my grandfather played for the 76ers with Will Chamberlain. That's from... Jalen Worley. So that's why I say Jalen Worley is now my favorite Seminole. But in this day and age, who writes a note like that to yeah. show the appreciation? There's our man. No better SID in the ACC than Chuck Walsh. No, he is the best in, in any sport. I've been doing this for 25 years. And the, the notes that he puts together, the, the attention to detail, the, the investment of time with us, to help us to get ready to tell these stories on this broadcast. Chuck does a tremendous job. And also, kudos to Florida State. Look, there's a reason why the football team's won three national championships. The basketball team's been to 18 NCAA tournaments and one Final Four. Women's soccer, national champions in 2014, 18, 21, 23. Baseball's the winningest team in the country, basically, over the last 10, 10 years. Softball national champions in 2018. They produced 21 Olympians in 2016. First class all the way and Chuck Walsh a great representative for Leonard Hamilton from this basketball team and Josh Nickelberry thank you for your personal note it means a lot to an old guy like me believe me I, uh, I concur Jalen as well thank you so much brightened my day and couldn't 
have more quickly sent a message to Chuck saying, boy, that really was something. Yep. Never have seen anything like it in all of our years. Well, speaking of the women's soccer team at Florida State, how about Brian Penske? His team just completed an undefeated 22-0-1 record. They beat Stanford on December 4th. There's coach for the fourth time. Florida State is the national champ of women's soccer. And oh, by the way, the football team has a pretty big game coming up. Not as big as they would like for it to be, but they'll be taking on Georgia, of course, in the Orange Bowl, December 30th, 4 o'clock on ESPN in a uh, matchup of two teams that would have much preferred to have been in the college football playoff. Yeah, that's the national championship game, isn't it, Doug? Well, some the people Bowl think this it year? is. Yeah. A couple of pretty good teams in yeah. the midst of tremendous seasons. You lose your quarterback, you still win, and you don't make it to the final four of the football playoffs. Yeah. Hard to swallow. Hard to yeah, figure, I'm hard to swallow. A, I'm not a fan of college football. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. Chuck somewhere. Harris just keeps on putting points on the board. Man, SMU has been so good on the glass. There's a connectivity to this team that I did not see last year. Unselfish. Well, this is Smith. an impressive play. Yeah, going to have a chance for a three-point play. And uh, you're right, impressive. And, and they've gotten just enough offense here in the second half to get themselves some separation. Well, and Samuel Williamson, that guy that we talked about, is going to have a breakout season. It may have started tonight in Tallahassee. That kid has here in been the second half. awesome. Yeah, yeah, he has been awesome this half. Chuck Harris, by the way, with his game-high 24 points, still eight shy of his career high, which came against Tennessee Tech last December when he was a Butler Bulldog. But with points and baskets coming at a premium, especially in that rock fight of the first half, Harris was the one coach who kept this SMU offense alive. Yeah, when Zurich Phelps a year ago couldn't score, this team just folded offensively. Now, Chuck Harris, the way that he's playing this season, it gives them a wonderful option that can make shots, can attack off the dribble. And then you add Samuel Williamson to that mix as well. Look, we're talking about a guy that's 6'8", that can put the ball on the floor, can go get you an offensive rebound, has a good enough butter to go get it, is improving defensively, and Zurich Phelps hasn't even played well tonight. But this is a team that has some weapons. And Rob Lanier is finding out day by day how good those weapons are. They're two two-point losses away from being eight and two going into this game. And now an impressive road win tonight at Florida State. 42 second half points for SMU, shooting 62% and only five turnovers. I mean, you talk about flipping the script from half to half. Yeah. It all happened on the defensive end. I mean, they established their dominance defensively early in this game and off the look. FSU matched them defensively for a long time, and then FSU started, I think, panicking a little bit offensively. They lost their patience. They lost their confidence in each other. Started forcing some shots, and SMU took advantage of them. That was it. SMU has been a more mature team tonight, especially on the road, winning in Tallahassee. Well, after this, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the day around the ACC with highlights and analysis of every men's game. And look ahead to the best matchups on the schedule in the coming week. Coverage you can only find here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Primo Spears' first field goal as a Seminole cuts it to 14. Yeah, he may settle in now. I think he really pressed tonight. You can understand that first game back after all the the reports about you know transfers being eligible and then they would lose a year of eligibility and finally came through with everybody can play, which is a good thing for college basketball. Yeah, and you just don't know, even though he has been around college basketball, this is third stop. He's gotta, you know, play with your emotions, play with your mind. Am I gonna play, am I not gonna play? And then for a while, well, if you play during this window, you may play two games and lose an entire year of eligibility and not until yeah. Yesterday, did it get worked out that, well, you can play 
and you will be able to play for the rest of the season. It's a lot. You know, I'm happy for all those young men like Primo Spears who now get an opportunity to play. Look, this is a player's game. It's not an administrator's game. It's, it's, not, it's not even a fan's game. It's a player's game. It's not a coach's game. And these young men deserve the opportunity to play. Look, the way I look at it, in business, we have things called non-competes. And so if you sign a non-compete, well, you don't get to go and do your job at another organization because you sign a non-compete. In college basketball, though, there's no non-compete. And I don't, I don't understand why we went down this path of saying, well, you know what, we have to go to a court to find out. The, the attorney generals in six different states sued the NCA, and then come up with a ruling that there's going to be a temporary restraining order, and then it turns into everybody can play, which was the right decision, by the way. And I applaud the NCA, I applaud the attorney generals from those six different states, and now guys can play because these players deserve to play, period. Well, if you like what you've seen out of the Mustangs, and you're a fan of the ACC, you are going to see a lot of the Mustangs, because of course they with Stanford and Cal will be full members of the Atlantic Coast Conference come the fall. And uh, for SMU, this has been a long time coming. Since the death penalty back in the early 90s, it has been really hard, and they have tried again and again and again through multiple channels to get back to have a seat at the table. And so the folks in Dallas are so happy to have their Mustangs as part of the ACC. And uh, we are looking forward to what they and the Cardinal and the Bears are able to bring to the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, for those ACC fans that aren't familiar with, with SMU, Semi Ojale was selected 37th in the NBA draft by Boston. Sterling Brown spent some time in the NBA. These are all players from the last five seasons. Shake Milton also was a great player, was picked up by Dallas, then traded to Philadelphia. Now is with Minnesota. Ben Moore also One had a cup of coffee in the NBA. And then Ferran Hunt also was a two-way player uh, with the New York Knicks for a while. So this is, this is a program that has produced NBA professional players in the, in the most yeah, recent past. Those guys were under the watch of Larry Brown and Tim Jankovic, the two head coaches immediately preceding Rob Lanier, and they have had a marvelous run. And again, they put a ton of money into redoing Moody Coliseum. It's a great home court. They're putting money into building up the football stadium to make it bigger. Money is not a problem for this athletic department. And they are coming to the ACC not just to be a middle-of-the-pack team in any sport. They're coming to be contenders for championships. Yeah, Tim Jankovic doesn't get enough credit for the job he did along with Larry Brown at SMU. I mean, it put SMU on the national consciousness with NCAA tournament bids, with NBA players. And then Rob Lanier comes in as Tim was able to walk away on his own terms. And now Rob Lanier comes in. You're going to have a transition year. And now we're seeing the fruits of his labor as well. SMU's a really good job in a great city in a great arena. So get ready, ACC. You're coming to Dallas next year. Yeah. SMU, better part of the last decade, has spent time almost every year in the national rankings in basketball. Seminoles forced the turnover, get the easy layup by Jameer Watkins. Back to a 10-point game. Florida State continues to apply that pressure. You know, they have played with energy here in the second half. First half was a little rough. Ball deflected. Boy, horrible place. Yeah, it found the ball, and, and Samuel Williamson right there put the ball right above his head. He's looking right at the target. He's going to pass. That's a turnover waiting to happen. You can't do that against the double team. you got to go triple threat. you got to give him head fakes. you got to keep continue to move and attack. Can't walk. Traveling violation. violation. Can't move your feet on the inbound if it's not after a made basket. You see the turnovers. Up 15 now for the Mustang. Now Seminoles, they can make it interesting if they can knock down a quick three. Yep. And got it in the hands of the right man. Green gives it to Watkins who penetrates. Lost the ball out of bounds. It's a turnover back to SMU.
They're going to take another look to see right if they now. got the call. Went off the hand. That first look made me think that uh, it was off of SMU. But after further review, not so sure. And Leonard Hamilton has come up with a 10-point play in the last 23.8 here. So is there enough there to overturn that? I mean, obviously an SMU player got their hands on the ball, but that doesn't mean the Florida State player didn't touch it last. It's really close. Bert Smith, Ted Valentine, Katie Burdett, our three officials tonight. Bert Smith was the one who was initially looking at the video replay to try and come up with the correct call here. I don't think there's enough there to overturn it because they called it SMU ball. There's the hand that slaps down. So after Williamson slapped the ball from Watkins, did the ball hit Watkins before it went out of bounds? It's FSU basketball. Look for Darren Green. Good opportunity missed by Taylor Bold Bowen. And now with the shot clock off, a foul is given that will send Williamson back to the free throw line. Well, from here, SMU will play Tuesday against Houston Christian at home at Moody Coliseum before a game on Friday the 22nd at Murray State. And then they're off until the new year when conference play gets going on January 2nd against Charlotte. So moving forward, what do you see from Coach Lanier and his club? Well, this is definitely a game to build on. This is a, a team that's getting better every single night out. And now they go into their last non-conference game and then get ready for Charlotte in the tough American. Of course, FAU and Memphis are going to be a load to deal with in that league. Tulane, very talented. But this SMU team, from what I see tonight, they've got a chance to make some noise in the Americans. That should do it. SMU comes to Tallahassee and takes down Florida State 68-57. Final thought, Coach? Just a grinded out win for the Mustangs of Rob Lanier. Chuck Harris, 24 points to lead the way. 